Well, we should get going. Oh, so I'd like to say. But before that, are you getting hungry? Oh, now that I mention it. Right, it's lunchtime. Let's get something to eat. Sunset! There are a lot of restaurants here in Tomasi. The problem is that around noon on the weekend, people will line up outside of them. And all that. People line up at restaurants in Japan a lot, huh? Yes, a uh, great deal of people come to a popular restaurants, especially in Tokyo, so there's no avoiding it. By the way, is there anything you'd like to eat? Anything I'd like to eat, huh? Let me see, I think it should be something really Japanese. Did we get the achievement and I didn't even notice it? I don't know. Something really Japanese. Hmm. Mm, actually, there's something I've been smelling for a while. Smelling? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of sweet and fragrant. What could it be? Oh, that, I see. Yes, that would be quite Japanese. Then as long as we're here, let's go to the restaurant that's putting out that smell. Sounds good. Sunset! Based on how it smells, I bet it'll taste great. So, what does this uh, restaurant serve? <laughs> it's a Unagi restaurant. Unagi? You mean eel? Yes. Those thin, dirty, squiggly things? That's right. So you You don't want to after all. I'm not against it, but to be honest, I'm a little skeptical. I see. Should we go somewhere else then? Oh no, this is fine. I was just uh, a little surprised. But yeah, I'm alright. Really? Have you ever had eel before? I haven't, obviously. So I can't really comment on it. You know, another one that I find odd is squid, but I've never had that either. It's like, I've had fish, and I like fish, but it's usually, you know, like... I'm not even sure what type of fish it is, honestly. It's probably cod, I imagine. Stuff like that. But definitely never had eel or anything like that. Really? Yeah, appreciating the local food is, uh, food is important to understanding the culture. Respecting each other this way will lead to better cultural exchanges. You know, I wonder what my reaction would be like to sampling Japanese cuisine. Because I don't think I've ever had anything that's actually, you know, essentially Japanese cuisine. Like, since can and all, like, one thing I've been wanting to try but can't, because uh, I don't know where they even sell it in my country, is Taiyaki. It sounds delicious. Hmm, what's wrong? Oh, sure. Nothing, that was well said, and I'm rather impressed. But really? Sure, sure. I believe that each country has fostered its own unique culture, and food is the best demonstration of that. So I'm really glad you feel that way too. Really? Haha, <laughs> I know that. Uh, what is it? Not me. I was just thinking how happy I am that you're here. Eh, uh, so, so, what's the least? Right, the main dish is at uh, an Unagi restaurant, or uh, Unagi and... Una, uh, Unadon. Unagi is Unadon? Unadon is cooked eel brushed with herbs sauce and served over rice. Unagi is the same thing. Eel over rice but served inside a box called an um, oji. So they're both eel on rice? What's the difference? The only difference is what they're served in, or so it's said. Some stores separate them in other ways, but it seems no one knows why they're considered different. Also, not you are ranked as regular high in first class. The higher the ranking, the bigger the eel serving will be on the top. And in some rankings, this corresponds with ratings of pine, bamboo, or plum. They rank them with plants? Yes, the luckier the plant is for to be, the higher the cost. 
I think we should go with the middle ranking. Hi. I see four maybe. Excuse me, give me my sand and all that. Oh my god, I see my star. Hold on to a hive. Oh, Mata say she must star. Let your face is my service when bringing your food. Oh, wow, it's even got a lid. They say that in the old days people were walking around town selling the Nazi. Well, then, I'll open the lid and. This is it? Hmm, what a smell. It really does, uh, with your appetite. But it doesn't look like eel at all. It's so flat. This put on deep on the eel with a knife. Put it on a skewer, flush it with sauce, and then slowly boil it. You know what? From, like, imagine if eels could think and comprehend stuff like this, and someone said a line like that. That's actually a horror story to them. It's like, oh yeah, they're split, deboned with a knife, put on a skewer, plus with a bit of sauce, and then slowly broil the bastard. He's like, ah! That's the thing with all types of fish, really, isn't it? I mean, you've got, like, some people that eat fish that is literally just a freaking fish, just like, you know, not, not cut up or anything like that. You're just like, you know, have a fish staring at you. I would ne probably never be able to eat a fish. If it was like that, I'd be like, hell no, man! It makes me think of, uh, comedian Jasper Carrots. I think he was, like, talking about, like, some experience he had in China with food or something like that, and he said something about his food. I can't remember if it was fish or something else, but he was, like, essentially said something like... Um, <coughs> yeah, it was a fish, actually. He's just like, I don't want to, like, you know, have to stare at my... Well, actually, ah, uh, goddamn, I can't remember the way you were with it. Very nice. It's kind of amusing. Uh... Essentially, he said something along the lines of not wanting to, you know, stare at the animal that he's going to be eating, essentially. I just can't remember how he worded it, but it was kind of amusing. And the way he like freaking talks about how casual they are about it. It's like, oh, here's the aquarium, and just get out of that, and it's like, okay. It's like, I don't know, I can't remember, it's been a while. But anyway, that's what I think. There used to be a saying that learning to skirt them took three years. Learning the knife technique took eight, and learning how to, how to cook them took a lifetime. Well, that's a bit much, isn't it? Wow. The same is true for the swords. Some restaurants have traditional recipes. They've handed down for generations. In all words, the people here have loved eel for a very long time. Anyway, let's eat it before it gets cold. Sure, eat a lucky mouse! Hum! Oh, yeah! It's fragrant and sweet. There are even some nice fatty bits. I can't believe this is one of those slimy eels. The sauce has soaked into the rice, too. I could eat just the sauce and rice. I'm glad you like it. Ah, Makoto, what are you putting on it? It's a spice called Sancho. That goes very well with Unagi. Would you like to try some? Well, maybe just a little. Hmm. You didn't like it? It's an odd taste and a little spicy. That's true. But I feel like it tightens up the sweetness of the eel. I thought eels were just slimy and gross creatures, but if you cook them right, I guess they can also be delicious. Phew, that was delicious! I wish there was a place we could eat eel in my country. Yes, I suppose eel is still considered a rare as far as Japanese food goes. Unfortunately, the number of eel in the wild has gone down recently. So the price goes up every year. Yeah, that's the problem with stuff like that, isn't it? Like, you overfish and, like, 
the population of it goes down. And like, you know, just, and we've increased demand on like that industry, it becomes even worse, isn't it? That's true. It was pretty pricey. There are a lot of things we don't know about fuel ecology, and they're an endangered species now, so people say getting a hold of them will become even more difficult. Oh no! It'd be a shame to not be able to eat something so delicious. <laughs> Reminds me of another comedian, Lee Evans. I can't uh, try to remember what he was talking about. He was like trying. To, it was like something to do with endangered species. And like, he just like how like some people don't care, and he just like. He gives an example, he just like. If the, oh wait. No, I think it was like. Uh, it wasn't endangered species, I think it was actually like being pen pals with poor people from poorer countries or something like that. I can't remember, and just like was going on about how some people don't care about that unless it directly affects them. And if <laughs> just use an example, it's like imagine if like cod became an endangered species. <laughs> You'd be just like, what, what will happen with my chips? It's like, I would like to be a pen pal with a card or a uh, large salmon plays or something like that. Just like... I mean, that's like a really common fish, but if something like that happened, you'd be like, Oh my god! No! What will happen to my chips? That's why a lot of companies are researching ways to cultivate them uh, domestically. It's just like, with that, it's like, Oh, delicious! But when they're like become critically endangered, like, oh shit, but if we eat them all, we will never be able to eat them ever again. I hope they can raise a lot of eels to best police so they can be cheaper to eat. Then we would argue to spread all over the world. That's true, I hope you're right. The eels wouldn't be happy with that. Well, now that we're full, it's time to do our sky activity. What is the sky activity? Oh, I think an idea what it might be. Hmm, maybe bungee jumping or something like that. Bungee? I've heard they made it so you can go bungee jumping off the middle of the Macau Tower and stuff. Bungee jumping from the sky tree? <laughs> that would be fun too. That'd be terrifying. Do you mean is that it's not it, right? Glad to hear it. I'm afraid the sky tree has no such attraction. And the place we're going next is somewhere far more romantic. Romantic? Romantic? Ooh. Isn't it lovely? Hmm. Ooh! Achievement Unlocked Sky! Nice! Very nice. I was not expecting a CG, to be honest. Very nice. I get it. When she said Sky, she meant the planetarium. Oh, of course! They didn't say there was a planetarium, wasn't it? Is there anything new here? Nope. But not a CG. I never thought we'd be able to see such a beautiful night sky in the middle of the city. Perhaps Japanese people just like looking up at the stars. There are over 100 planetariums in the city. Damn. There are that many? There's some of the more recent ones don't just show the stars, but scenes from Mount Fuji or the Auroras. They also do collaborations with artists, musicians, and literacy works to incorporate all kinds of innovative features. Ah, uh -huh. what's that nice smell? It seems that channeling in, uh, in pleasant aromas to help people relax is one of the new features. You know, it's funny really, isn't it? Because he's got no eyes. I mean, he's got the indication for eyes, but he's got no actual eyes drawn in. It's like, I can't see the planetarium, but I'm sure it looks lovely. I see. I mean, how different is that? Like, if you choose ocean, you just like... Uh, I. I'm not sure, maybe they've updated it so that you actually go somewhere with Acura, but it's like, I don't remember it really leading to anything. I don't know. 
Hey, are the stars in your country the same as the ones here? I think so. They're probably the same stars you see in Japan. <laughs> I'm just kind of like... I don't know how to describe my reaction now. Just kind of like... Serious? I mean, of course it would be! It's not like we got... Like... We, the planet orbits the sun. Of course we'd be able to see the same stars, the same constellations. Right? Then again, there are like, you know, parts of the planet or wherever you are could, I suppose, influence like what type of thing you see. Like in the Northern Hemisphere, I think like in the Arctic Circle, you can see like the auroras and all that, but you don't really see them like in say Japan, for example, or the UK. I don't know. Never really thought about that, to be honest. Or maybe I have. Doesn't matter. I'm mysterious. We're so far away, yet we see the same view. It's such a small distance in the broader scope of the universe. But it is a rather large distance for us. Yeah, I think I've mentioned this before. I remember hearing like you could fit all the planets in our solar system between the space between Earth and the Moon. That's just how far away things are in the universe in general. Just like large distances. If only we could move at the speed of light, we'd be able to see each other whenever we wanted. Yeah. Of course, if you did move at the speed of light. Like, depending on where you're going, I mean, imagine going around the world at the speed of light. You'd probably crash. It's like, you reckless fools, what have you done? Use that for space travel, maybe, but not on Earth. <laughs> Can you imagine going at a speed of light and you just go straight through a massive flock of birds? You're like, skewered! Haha, <laughs> feeling sleepy. Uh, especially now that I'm full. It's okay to sleep. I'll wake you up after it's over. Hmm. Hey. Hmm. You could stay like this forever if you'd like. Then she stabs him. Ow! Ah! No. <laughs> You have a good nap. Hmm. Is that all? Don't worry about it. The sky tree is open until 10 p.m. tonight, so going up and seeing the Tokyo skyline at night after coming to the planetarium might make for a lovely day. If you bring a girlfriend here next time, you might just want to try that. Ha 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 ha. Uh, girlfriend, huh? Coming here with you is enough for fun. I mean, they could potentially, you know, get in a relationship. Obviously not on this playthrough, same as the other playthrough. But if you, like, you know, pick Mikado's uh, related areas often enough, like, at least twice, then you will get that. Really, if you say that, I'm going to believe you, uh, believe you, okay? You should believe me. Oh, you always do that. Mm -hmm. Nothing, it's nothing. As long as we're here, let's have a look at the shops then. I don't know, so. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, that is. It's interesting, really. I picked like two Acra locations and then the Sky Tree. It's just like, maybe this is making up for that. Hey, Aki chan, what's for dinner tonight? I'm pretty sure it's probably, uh,. Actually, I forget. Doesn't matter. Maybe that that scene made up for the fact that in that in all the playthroughs I've done, the three playthroughs, the three versions, we have not really seen much of Mikado because like it always ends up being accurate locations. Although I do recall in the first playthrough choosing uh, one Mikado location, can't remember where it was. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save. I saw how long this recording has been going on for, so I know for a fact that it's going to be split into two parts, and that's not even including when I go through 
reading in Japanese for a couple of scenes. Actually, uh, no, I didn't go for any part of scenes yet. Well, I did attack them just now, didn't I? Also, once it loads, remember this one? That was in Ikukuro. The Whoa! Fish! I don't know why. So in that drawing, you can see that, like, like in, in this recording I showed early on. When I drew him, I had this image up to kind of like as a reference point. You can definitely see it. Honestly, I should have had it up again because, like, I've got to draw in his teeth now that I'm looking at it again. But you know, his arms out like that. I was originally going to do that as well, but then I was like, ah, shit, I don't want to, to draw it like that. It would just look awkward and make it look like he has his hands on Akra and Makoto's backs, and just would seem just like, what are you doing, Mr. Protagonist, with that smile as well? Because, like, no, it's like, have one of his arms is like, kind of to his side, like, Akra's pose, essentially. And the other hand is like, let's try to make it so that he's giving, like, the priest sign. And so I did that instead. So, obviously, when it came to that, I literally just looked at my own hand when I did that, essentially. And like, okay, how am I gonna go about drawing this hand? Because hands are a pain in the ass to draw. So I have to use my own hand as a reference point rather than this image for that. And there's that one that we just got. Well in this, I guess. Like, yay! That is a beautiful CG. She has a look of elegance, look out of this, isn't she? Wait, was this in the Sky Tree as well? I think it was. Man, this looks like a place I would like to visit, honestly. It looks nice. I wonder, like, remember, like, the first version of this? Like, there was, like, only literally one page of CG, and now there's four pages. Granted, page four has only got one, but the CGs have, like, increased a lot since the first version. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> Just, like, see that? That's from a scene that I'll be going over speaking in Japanese. It's a scene that happened that I mentioned after going to two locations of Akira. I imagine there's a CG like this for Mikado, because there's like... Actually, I might as well show you, actually. I won't click on it, but I'll show you what this scene replay shows it as. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Hanabi Akira. Hanabi, which means fireworks. So since it says Akira, there must be a version for Mikado as well. But it must be triggered from probably spending more time with one character than the other, because that's clearly how I got that one with Akira, because I went to two different locations with her, and at the end of the second location... I suppose it's also to do with the ordering as well, I imagine. Like, if we say, like... If I went, like... Actually, didn't that happen in the original playthrough I did in this Let's Play? There was Ueno, followed up by the Makoto location, wasn't it? After that, what was it? Chibamata. And then the third location was, uh, uh, Nakano. Notice that we didn't get that scene despite going two locations with Akira. I think that might be it. It's like, you've got to get in the right order. It doesn't matter what location you choose. As long as it's with one of the characters, and you do it like two times, and it's probably different scenes of three times as well. Look at this as well, you see like fourth day, fifth day, but no sixth day, which there apparently is. And you see scenes missing in the Kyoto one, so it's clearly scenes like one must be for Akira, one for Makoto, and the sixth day must have like something else play out as well. Maybe. Actually. If there is a sixth day and Akira has two endings, or three endings, maybe. 
then how would Makoto also have that, if one of these spaces would be for the sixth day, I'd imagine? I don't know what else to go, so I... Wait, oh yeah, that's the Total Sky Tree one, isn't it? Alright, let's have a look. Okay. Let's see if I can handle this. Uh, what was the other location? Yeah, it was, actually. That one. I'll go over these, why not? So if you want to get the top of Sky Tree, take these lines. And then, officially completed in 2012, Tokyo Sky Tree is regarded as Tokyo's newest symbol. When I went inside, I was surprised by how tall it was. Uh, even, it's even higher than the KVLY TV mass in the United States. And it is accredited by the Guinness World Records as the world's tallest tower in 2011. It ranks second as the largest building in the world after the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. The official height of the Sky Tree is 634 meters, which is fun due to Tokyo's countryside once being known as Musashi. Now, if this was like, I mean, they'd like update this to 2016 version, but I don't know if they've updated like the uh, sightseeing album information or not. So, for all I know, uh, maybe the top of Sky Tree is no longer the second tallest tower or whatever. The second largest? I mean, holy shit, that is pretty damn tall. I mean, my god. During the hallways, the Tokyo Sky Tree is off the floor, lead with toys from the observatory, which is 350 meters to 450 meters above the ground. You get a 360 degrees view around Tokyo. When the weather is nice, sometimes you can see Mount Fuji from the Sky Tree. There's also a facility known as Omachi, a shopping and entertainment district with an on site aquarium and planetarium. Yeah, when you say that, say ocean. Maybe there is like being a new scene with Acura that gets added on where you go to the aquarium. Maybe. Because, like, it would say sky and ocean, it seems like a matchup, wouldn't it? We ate all the spacefully dishes and sort of match here and at the local restaurants. Also recommend looking at the sky tree from the outside. Depend on which direction you're looking at it from, it looks warped on both sides. The best picture of the sky tree is on the outside, which uses a variety of colored lights to illuminate the tower at night. It's almost like watching fireworks. Uh, where, where are we here? Uh, just one picker. Oh, you didn't. Well, you did actually see if you saw my playthrough of the original version, because I technically went to this location in that room. That next playing at all. The Picara is one of the pillars of Tokyo and is a massive shopping district. It's not as specialized as at the uh, bar, but it's a town painted with a variety of things new and with stores such as electronic stores and fashion for pizza, to restaurants, amusement parks, and museums. The Picara is the man's living shopping district, and there are parts full of famous shops that sell Goza and Jesus. What the fuck is with my boss? Shiny star cooking just in the middle of vegetables wrapped in a friendly roll dough made from a fine flour. With Chinese cooking doughs, it is one of the most popular types of food in Japan. Alongside a multitude of French and Italian restaurants, the town's true specialty is ramen. Ramen is Japan's most popular form of Chinese cooking, and there are regional varieties all across the nation. Ikumakuro is famous for its uh, the warring ramen shops. You can preach on various levels. We ate there at noon and I have to sit perfectly sit at the taste of the smooth noodles we had a lot of fun. Should have paused between that because it's a full stop. But it makes me think of like this the town center like where I live. Just like lords of like restaurants like I live. must and I just imagine like anyone walking on that street and like anyone else on the in the other restaurants hears or sees someone walk into a different restaurant, just pop their head out and be like, YOU TRAITOR! GET YOUR ASS OVER HERE! Just like, NO, COME THIS WAY! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like so many of them. 
More about food. Tokyo is a town that has featured a variety of cuisines in the same ancient times. In the Edo period, it's from 1603 to 1868 when the family and government could roll in the country. This time period borrows its name from Edo, Tokyo's original name, and the original capital of Japan. Driving to the samurai, I have to visit Edo once every few years under the alternative attendant system. Known as Sun King Kotai, this was a law requiring the principal lord to travel from their distant provinces to Edo with huge pennies in tow. It was established by the government to keep the... keep the vote, please. Lords impoverished and under control. Obviously, these small samurai long for the food of their province. That the man who turned Edo into a place where you can enjoy food from all over the van. If you read the diaries of those samurai, these samurai, you can follow any references to them walking around and trying out different kinds of food every day. Even now, you can enjoy food from all over the country in Tokyo. And that passion for cooking has a long history. No! Terrible films in Snaidal period. Yanak is from the shrines of graveyards. One of these, Yanak Samuel, is quite famous in recent years. Paul Samet? The retro style of it. It's like, it says that. It mentions the Yanaka Cemetery, but we didn't get to see it because the protagonist was such a damn pussy. It's like, oh no, I'm not going to that. It's scary. And after I tease him about it briefly, he didn't see it though, because, you know, this happened off screen. In recent years, retro style buildings have made it popular even in Japan, and there's been an increase in people walking around the Yano Yano Sen. The Dr. Nozu Sinagi area, the reason was spread uh, spared the bombing from the war. So many old buildings still remain. In addition, new shops have been bought up and nice the old storefronts. Creating a feeling mix of the old and the new. That's the most popular at that site, Yanaka Ginza, is a short permanent city along Avenue that's still uh, Crammed in about 70 individually owned storefronts, all of which are largely empty and are always bustling with people. There's a lot of food that you can eat while walking around, like for kids and dango. So it's a funny place to go to eat, too. In front of bars, it's not uncommon to see people putting beer in cases of bread, midship chairs, drinking canned beer, and making small talk. You know, there's also a town of cats. You see cats lounging on the road sign and in front of shops, and you often see tourists taking pictures of them. There are also a lot of shops and wares that feature a feline body, and they're aggressively used in signage. While walking around Yanaka Ginza, you might be surprised to abruptly see a cat statue on a roof. These are the Yanaka Seven Lucky Cats, placed there by the merchants to help people enjoy Yanaka Ginza, and there are seven hidden cat statues in all. Looking for them as you walk around is a part of the fun. At the entrance to Yanaka Ginza is a stairway called the uh, you got your dad man at Sunset Stairs. From the top of the stairs on clear well days, you can see beautiful sunsets. Though you may want to plan a visit to Yanaka Ginza around the laps. But the shop closed around 5 pm, so be careful. There's a new shrine on 19 years ago. One of Japan's most legendary figures, Yamato Takeru, legendary hero of old Japan. Many famous stories are told about him, such as the time he dressed in women's clothing to infiltrate an enemy banquet, and when he escaped from a fire with one of Japan's three imperial treasures, the sword, Izanagi. I think I've heard that sword before. At least vaguely. Maybe I've even heard this guy as well. Apparently, this shrine in Senagi, which was moved to its current location during the Edo period. It's one of Tokyo's ten great shrines. The current main shrine building was completed in 1706 under a great construction project known as the Penka Mishu. The seven current buildings on the grounds are regarded as important cultural properties. Many of the masters of the Meiji period who lived in the island, and so it often appears in literature, and the ruins of many things spoken about in that literature remain. Inside there is also a Senbon Tori, thousand gates. Like the famous one at Kyoto Tsuchiri and Ari Shrine, well, there aren't really that many gates there, as the thousand just implies that there are very many. Each was denoted that the ruler donated a thanks by those whose wishes were granted after visiting the shrine. The number of gates shows just how many wishes have been granted. 
The sight of all the bright red gates gallery, the, the, the gallery is an overwhelming sight. The thousand gates of Nazareth Shrine are said to spurred through with evil influences if you walk them from north to south. I mean, passing through from the left of the main shrine building, the Tome and Ari Shrine is partly through the thousand gates walk, and many women visit it to pray for their romance to bear fruit. There's a shrine that's famous for its azaleas, and the approx 2,000 azalea gardens blossom into a wealth of colour with 100 species and 3,000 frames in spring. There's a treat for the eyes, I bet he was there. Very nice. I quite like that location. Didn't have any CGs, but it was a nice location. Anyways, this, this selfie is going to have more bonus parts than I thought, because this is going to be split into two parts. And the next ones are going to be like essentially me reading through a couple of scenes in Japanese. Like that fireworks one I mentioned. I'm gonna play for the rest of Akira's routes that I'm assuming it's obviously going to lead to. And any scenes that we haven't seen before, other than the locations we visited, you know, like the fireworks one. I'm also going to include the movie one if we get that as well. Just so I can read in Japanese those scenes and have like a story being told, which is like the developments of the relationship or whatever. But anyways, it seems kind of a shame after that scene with Mikado, it's still gonna end up back with it. It's like they they totally had a moment there at that planetarium, man. Someday, Mikado, if they make another version, maybe you will finally get your chance to shine. But Akira has been dominating since the very beginning. It's like she said in the after LB talk. I mean, I said, but in character. It's like, I know all the best locations! So yeah. Anyways, I'll see you next time for the other bonus parts. Seriously, this could just count as part of the main left play. But I just like already had the final part, and it's gonna be probably a number of bonus parts as well. That could have just been part of it, but. Wherever, I'm got the needs of bonus parts because they're after the main playthrough. So whatever, I'll see you then, dudes. I'll see you next time, dudes. See you next time.